other in the house. So, over. So we stand upon the same scriptures that God is our judge, he's our law giver, he's the one who gives the laws for education. And he's our king and he will save us. Amen. Therefore we repent for misuse, underuse and abuse of the gift of our minds and brains. We repent for not functioning in dominion in education. We repent for not upholding education like we ought to. We repent for accepting the lies from the enemy and submitting ourselves to lower standards educationally. Mm -hmm. We repent from misplacing our educational priorities whereby we uphold the world's standards and view over the word of God. Mm -hmm. We repent for conforming to this world and not allowing our minds to be renewed by his word. Mm -hmm. We repent for not recognizing the lifestyle of excellent education as worship unto God. We repent for not practicing discipline in the lifestyle of education. Amen. Father, we repent on behalf of every parent who has not invested quality time into training their children. Yes. We repent from embracing the confusion that the enemy presents to us daily from the mountain of education. And we repent for showing favoritism within the educational institutions and systems in the name of Jesus. Today we recognize, we identify the enemy's strategy to bring confusion into the educational system by is insisting that God be taken out of the school system. We, re we identify his strategy to prevent individuals from investing in quality formal and informal education. From, uh, we identify the en enemy's strategy to blind individuals from recognizing and appreciating quality sources of education. We identify the enemy's strategy which prevents people from recognizing the importance of attaining the maximum heights of educational pursuits. We identify the enemy's strategy to prevent people from building optimum capacity of their mental faculty. We identify the enemy's strategy of distraction, lack of resources, lack of determination, irrelevant excuses, lack of interest and focus and sabotage. We identify the enemy's strategy of deception, limitation and indoctrination in the name of Jesus. Amen. We uproot every altar, evil altar of ignorance, indoctrination, deception, limitation, plaguing the mountain of education. We uproot every evil altar of racism and inequality, plaguing the mountain of education. We uproot every evil altar of gun and violence that have been permitted in most educational premises. We uproot every evil altar that restricts the rightful access to Christianity and its practices within most educational premises. We uproot every evil altar of premature exposure of materials to children for the purpose of indoctrination. We uproot every evil altar of identity indoctrination and distortion that have been legally permitted to reign in the curriculum of most educational systems. We uproot every evil altar of fraternities erected in the hearts of many educational institutions. We uproot every evil altar of premature death that occurs yes. in most in educational system. premises. We uproot every evil altar of demoralization and we uproot every evil altar of favoritism and unfair treatment on the mountain of education. We close all these evil altars, all these landing strips and portals of the evil spirit controlling the educational system and we render them now inactive in the name of Jesus. Yes. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, we speak restoration and establishment of the altar of God in the heart of the mountain of education. We speak restoration and establishment of the name of Jesus Christ in the heart of the mountain of education. That within every classroom, the name of Jesus Christ will be freely proclaimed in the name of Jesus. We speak restoration and establishment of the role of parents teacher relationship in the mountain of education. We speak restoration and establishment of equality in the mountain of education. We speak restoration and establishment of peace in every educational institution. We speak restoration and establishment of affordable education in the mountain of education. We speak restoration and establishment of certainty in educational pursuits. And we speak restoration and establishment of moral and godly standards within the mountain of education. Yes. Father, we thank you that we, we are no longer, um, we will no longer be destroyed from lack of knowledge. Yes. That we will embrace the priority of learning by learning from you first. That we will be properly equipped 
educationally for every good work. That we will purposefully gain hearts of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. That ungodliness will no longer flourish in the mountain of education. We seal this covenant with the precious blood of Jesus, who is our eternal high priest in the order of Melchizedek. We declare that the Abrahamic blessing rests upon the mountain of education and family once again in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Last one, and that would be government. Amen. Amen. We just head straight to the point. Christians, as Christians, we are called to co labor with Christ. And I will read the scriptures for us, and then we we'll pray against about eight prayer points. Amen. Isaiah chapter 9, verses 6 to 7. The message translation reads. For a child has been born for us, the gift of a son for us. He will take over the running of the world. His names will be amazing counselors, strong God, eternal father, prince of wholeness. His ruling authority will grow and there will be no limits to the wholeness he brings. He will rule from the historic David throne over that promised kingdom. He will put that kingdom on a firm footing and keep it going with fair dealing and right living beginning now and lasting always the zeal of the lord god of angels armies will do this amen, amen. amen. beloved it is called upon us christians christians to be part of government yes. because government rests on the shoulder of our lord That's jesus right. christ That's right. so we are going to repent for accepting a lie from the devil mm -hmm. that we separate uh, church, church from government. Mm -hmm. That is a lie. If you separate church from government, then you are standing away from the administration of our Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. You are inviting a new administration upon your life. Yes. Amen. Mm -hmm. So today we are going to pray and repent against that. Now, in Proverbs 29, verses 2, the Word of God tells us, When the righteous are in authority and become great, the people rejoice. Yes. But when the wicked man rules, the people groan and sigh. Yes. Our Lord Jesus Christ told us that the devil has come to steal, kill, and destroy, but he has come that we may live life and live that life to the full. The only time when we will live that life on earth to the full is when the righteous are in office. Amen. Amen. So may the righteous step up and do what they need to do. Amen. And um, the issues that are plaguing the government include civility. Civility means conducting public business with respect for each other. Every elected official deserve the respect of the office in which they have been uh, elected into. So, government has to be conducted with civility. It's a problem they have. We have conflict of interest in government. So many people involve themselves in, in making decisions when they should have recused themselves. So that is a problem that the government has. So we are praying today that the Lord will reverse that situation, that the elected officials should not engage in conflicts of interest issues. There is cronyism, favoritism, and nepotism. This is right in government settings. So today we are praying against the spirit of cronyism, favoritism, and nepotism. Amen. 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 Nepotism comes from the uh, Italian word nipote. Nipote just means my nephew. So it is an extreme form of discrimination. Or, or, or favoritism where you will take your relatives and put them in government because you are the elected person so we are praying today and coming against that form of uh, favoritism cronyism is giving to your friends you know bringing your friends giving them positions even when they deserve it or not and these things they compromise the potential of the government to attend to the people then another issue that breaks governments is gifts and bribes. People receive gifts 
you know, we know that there is no free lunch. So when an administrator is going for free lunch, there may be a motive behind why they are going for that lunch. They should know that. And just to avoid that, we are praying that the government should have administrators who just run away from these free gifts and bribes. Amen. Amen. Another problem that plagues the government is lobbying ethics. Lobbies are people who stand on one side. They have the interests of the money guys. They have the interests of the powerful people. So they go to Congress and lobby on those issues. So we are praying against lobbying interests. Because if you are a lobbyist, you are not for the common good. Amen. You are out to promote an identity. We are going to also pray that the government will be more open with their meetings and open with their records and there should be transparency in government. Amen. Then, the personal lives of public officials, that is something that is also hurting the government. There is no fine line in the hearts of some of these public officials when they cross over the things that are supposed to be public, they bring them into their personal lives. Like, you know, maybe zoning in an area where